Okay, good morning everybody. We are about to start live yoga. So um, I'm listening to the motivational speaker, Sean Stevenson on health theory. And that is on impact theory on YouTube. So what are like the core components of sleep? Was something bad happening? Two seconds to turn around. Mine is a little loud. I'm only getting six hours even though I felt good. Um, any correlation between <laughs> All the extra sleep, there's, there's, short, there's a lot to unpack there. Number one, uh, what's so interesting is that you, you were doing something exceptionally right as far as what the research shows with improving your sleep, which is you were going to bed kind of consistently a little bit earlier than other folks might. And so what we call, what we call this is this anabolic window, or what we call money time sleep. And this is generally between the hours of 10 and 2, because it's more lined up with your natural melatonin secretion. So if you go to sleep during those times, you actually spend more time in the deepest, most anabolic stages of sleep. And you tend to produce more human growth hormone than other folks. So you are already winning with that. This is why you have a tendency to feel better even if you're getting less sleep because I, this isn't called sleep more, right? It's sleep smarter. And there are many people who sleep, you know, eight to nine hours and they wake up feeling like straight up, you know, hot garbage, you know what I'm saying? And they're just wondering why. It's because it's the quality of sleep. When I say quality of sleep, what does that mean? Let's break that down. So your sleep is regulated by changes in your, in your brain waves. It's really fascinating stuff. And we still don't know really what sleep is. Trying to define sleep is like trying to define, um, you know, in Forrest Gump's like life is like a box of chocolates. Sleep is like pretending to be dead. We don't really know, right? But we do know the changes that happen in the brain. We cycle from kind of a normal waking state gamma, beta, uh, we're probably in beta right now. We move to alpha, theta, delta is where the deep anabolic dreaming sleep takes place. And we need all of them. And there's a certain percentage we spend in each that helps rejuvenate our mind and body. And if you optimize certain things, you'll do it more efficiently. One of those gear shifts, like if you think about your body like this kind of manual transmission, is melatonin. Like people hear about Melatonin is a sleep hormone. It just helps your body to efficiently go through your sleep cycles. And if your melatonin is suppressed by various things, you know, I'll share a couple, then you're not going through those efficiently. And you can wake up feeling like a pinata after the party the next day, even though you're spending all the time on the mattress. So that's number one. Number two, there's this interesting process called thermal regulation. There's a natural drop in your core body temperature at night to help facilitate sleep for all of us if things are running properly. What was fascinating, and I shared a study about this, is that uh, they tested insomniacs, and everyone in this particular clinical study all had too high body temperature at night. It would not go down. And so what they did was they fit them with these thermal suits, right, that lowers their skin temperature, not even their core temperature, just one degree, and virtually eliminated all the symptoms of insomnia. Oh, Ambien can't do that, all right? And it's as simple as paying attention to how your body temperature influences your sleep. And so with your body temperature changing like that, it's kind of feeling more of an insulation. As a result of having more sleep, there's a ton of different things that could be correlated there. So I'm not going to say that the sleep is a causative factor, but it's really interesting how your body does change in the course of sleep. There's a natural rise in your core body temperature as the day goes, uh, as, I'm sorry, as the night goes on that helps to kind of wake you up. Um, so what I did want to share, though, when I said this kind of bold statement in the beginning, when we're talking about how sleep influences your body composition, I think everybody needs to know this. There was a, this study really blew my mind, and this was done at the University of Chicago. And they took people, and they put them on a calorie-restricted diet, kind of typical stuff again, I'm taught in college, to see the impact on weight loss when they're sleep deprived or getting enough sleep. All right. So they put the people on this particular diet, monitor everything. One phase of the study, they're getting eight and a half hours of sleep. All right. And then they track all their metrics. Another phase of the study, same exact diet, same exercise, they don't change anything else, but now they sleep deprive them and they take away three hours of sleep. So now they're getting five and a half hours of sleep versus eight and a half hours of sleep. At the end of the study, they found that when individuals were well rested, they burned 55% more body fat just by getting more sleep. And so the question is, how does this happen? Melatonin, when I talked about this a little bit earlier, it's not just that it's involved in sleep, it's also involved in fat loss. And this study, this was done in the journal Pioneer Research, found that uh, melatonin production helps to increase your body's mobilization of something called brown adipose tissue. 
right? This is a type of fat that burns fat, right? And the reason that it's brown is that it has more mitochondria. So it's very energy dense, right? These mitochondria, just for people who, I'm sure people have heard of this, but it's like these energy power plants in your cells that are creating the energy currency of your body, like how you experience energy, the energy exchange, something called ATP. And so when you are producing adequate melatonin, you're producing and mobilizing adequate amounts of brown adipose tissue, which just puts you in a metabolically advantaged state, all right? But if you're not getting the melatonin production, which you've got to meet two requirements. Number one, you need a biological night. So that means this could actually be during the day, but it's a consistent cycle of when it gets produced. But the other requirement needs to be met that you need darkness. Your body produces melatonin exclusively in darkness. And so that's one. Also, how do, you, how do they get that body fat change? HGH production, which we talked about too. Human growth hormone is muscle sparing, and it's a big driver of energy. It's also known as a youth hormone. Kids have an insane amount of HGH being produced. This is why they have so much energy. We have a pretty sharp decline in our production right around 18 to 20. But my argument is that around 18 to 20, we generally in our culture, like we leave the house, we might go to college, that kind of thing. And we no longer have structure, we no longer have rules, and we're not going to produce as much HGH. Third thing, really quickly, um, is, and this is all has to do with the diet and the food choices, is leptin. All right, and I know people have talked about leptin before, but leptin is your body's kind of glorified satiety hormone. And so when you're producing adequate amounts of leptin, you feel more in control, right? You feel more satiated. But when, when leptin kind of falls off the map or you have leptin uh, resistance can take place, then we're gonna have some pretty big issues with you regulating your cravings, your appetite. And so Stanford University researchers found that just one night of sleep deprivation radically suppresses your leptin. And now I hope folks can start to pay attention whenever you might not get the best sleep, how your cravings change the next day. You're gonna have a tendency to want to number one, eat more. Number two, you want to eat more kind of the starchy, crunchy, salty, sugary type things. And I remember my wife, who's actually here, uh, when we had our son, and I, she, she's never seen me eat this food. I was sitting there like waiting for the baby to come. I was eating uh, chocolate covered raisins. I was just like, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. You know, it was like three o'clock in the morning, you know? And so that's another thing. And uh, last one I'll share, there's so many that create that change in your body composition. But this one is incredibly important, is cortisol. Cortisol has been drugged as much recently. You know, it's getting blamed for everything, but it's not really a bad guy, it's just misunderstood, right? Cortisol is incredibly important. For example, cortisol is important for your thyroid to work, right? And that's kind of like the metabolism regulator of your body. But here's the thing, just one night of sleep deprivation radically increases your cortisol and suppresses melatonin actually as well. But this rise in cortisol has a really powerful ability to start to break down your muscle tissue, which your muscles, your body's kind of fat burning machinery. And so it can convert your muscle tissue into glucose. It's a process called gluconeogenesis as a kind of fight or flight response because your physiology doesn't know why you're not sleeping. You know, it must be some danger about, you know. And so understanding those major hormones and there's many others you start to see the picture that gets painted with just how much your sleep quality impacts your physical appearance. It's really crazy. I've always known you need sleep, but I didn't know why. And so getting into, uh, or transitioning, I should say, because I always knew you needed sleep because if I didn't get it, I felt terrible. But that was sort of the, the end of it. I even let myself just stop it, though. We don't really know why you sleep, but not diving into to the real breakdown, which is really fascinating. So what are things then that people can do to actually optimize yeah. their sleep? Yeah, this is what it's really all about. You know, I, I like to start with the low-hanging fruit first. Um, and something really, really fascinating is just simply changing or embracing the time of day that you exercise can improve your sleep quality. And so Appalachian State University did a really cool study and they wanted to see what time of day, exercising various times of day, how does it impact your sleep quality? And so they had the study participants to exercise exclusively at 7 a.m. and another phase exclusively at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, another phase exclusively at 7 p.m. in the evening. They compiled all the data. And at the end of the study, they found that morning exercisers spend more time in the deepest, most anabolic stages of sleep, so they're producing more human growth hormone. 
They have more efficient sleep cycles, what we've been talking about. They also tend to sleep longer, and, and this is the one that kind of can get glanced past, on average, they had about a 25% greater drop in blood pressure at night. So what's, what's up with that? That's correlated with a deactivation of your sympathetic fight or flight nervous system, right? So you're actually able to shift gears, get to that parasympathetic rest and digest, calming down by getting some exercise in the morning. And so how do we employ this, though? That's the question. Because some people are just like, you know, I can't exercise in the morning. And there's also people who exercise in the morning who might have terrible sleep. And it's because this is not like the magic bullet. This is a thing that's stacking your condition. If you're doing this and then messing up the one I'm going to talk about next, you're probably not going to have the best sleep. So here's how to employ this. Just five minutes. And I tested this. Each morning I do this five minutes of exercise. You know, it might be just jumping on a rebounder, you know, a little mini trampoline for five minutes, go for a quick power walk, uh, do some Tabata, which is just four minutes, and a little mobility work. And I guess most people don't know what Tabata is. It's high intensity interval training, basically. It's 20 seconds of exercise followed by 10 seconds of rest, repeated over and over again for four minutes. And in his clinical studies, this was found to outperform you know, traditional cardio, like the kind of moderate intensity, 45 minutes of exercise in four minutes. Wow. The change in your cardiovascular benefits, body composition, and also change in your mitochondria as well. This is why it works. It does something called a cortisol reset. All right, we talked about cortisol, but again, it's a good thing if it's in the right time, the right amount. Clinically, I would call these people tired and wired that would come in, I'm looking at the hormone panels, and the cortisol would be really low in the morning high at night. Thus, they have sleep problems. So you naturally, if your, if your cortisol is on a natural hormone rhythm, it would be elevated at its peak in the morning, right around 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., and then gradually decline as the day goes Does on. that have to do with what time you wake up? Sort of. I mean, the cortisol will kind of tend to nudge you out of sleep, but also will tend to notice that as, the day, as it, your sleep goes on, it becomes lighter and lighter anyway, right? This is when you tend to remember your dreams, like at the, at the uh, end of the sleep. And so getting this little boost, like helping your body to propel and get your cortisol up via exercise helps to reset that rhythm and get you back on track. So that's why it works. So that's number one, low hanging fruit. Just get in five minutes of exercise. Start in the morning, no matter what. Just five minutes is all you need. It's gonna help to create this snowball effect of good things for you. You know, five minutes. If this is the time you do go to the, to the gym and do your full workout, so be it all good. But everybody who's not already doing that, just get that five minutes in. And the second one, and this one is more of the tough love and the most difficult, but this is the most important one in our culture today. And this has to do with our tech, all right? So Harvard researchers have confirmed that blue light exposure from our favorite devices, you know, iPads, iPhones, Androids, tablets, televisions, they do in fact suppress your melatonin substantially because if your body essentially thinks the sun's out, is that the problem? So we have photoreceptors that are always trying to gauge what time it is, right? Because our bodies are wired up to be in sync with nature. But only recently, like literally just the past few decades, have we been able to manipulate and basically create a second daytime, right? So your body just, it doesn't really know how to figure it out. And so the blue and white spectrum specifically are the ones that are more similar to daylight. And so what it's doing is, and so here's what the researchers found, basically, Every hour you're on your device at night suppresses melatonin for about 30 minutes, right? So if you're on your, you know, you watch a movie, three-hour movie, for example, your melatonin is going to be suppressed. Even if you go to bed right after, you're not producing adequate melatonin for about an hour and a half. And so, again, you can be unconscious from sheer physical exhaustion, but you're not going to go through your sleep cycles efficiently. And so just be mindful of that. What I encourage people to do is to give yourself a screen curfew, just 30 minutes. All right, I don't want to make this complicated, just 30 minutes. But here's the rub. We are addicted to our devices, like straight up. We just need to be, I, I am, we all are, you know. Basically, it's because of this dopamine loop, right? Dopamine is so powerful, so interesting. Dopamine is one of the things I truly feel has helped to create our civilization as it is because it drives us to seek, right? Dopamine drives us. To, to, to seek and, and to grow and to find, to discover. The internet is perfect for manipulating this because every time you look for something, you find something. Especially social media, you seek, find, seek, find. 
produce the dopamine that drives you to look. But why do you keep going is every time you find something, you get a little bit of a, a hit from your opioid system. Like it's like this slow drip, right? morphine. And so it starts to like feel really good. And to the point where you might be doing your work and like you've got a deadline, and you just like, I'll check Instagram real quick. And before you know it, it's like 30 minutes later, you fall into the internet black hole. It's like, it just pulls you in. So be aware of that. I'm not saying, again, our connection with tech is just gonna grow. So I'm not bashing that. It's just be aware of it. And that when you try to abide by this principle, which will really, really help your sleep quality, to give yourself a screen curfew, you can't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs because you'll get what I call the internet jitters. Right? You'll start getting like um, a little bit of a withdrawal effect. Like, just check one, it's one, one post. What we have to do is this, you have to replace it with something of greater or equal value. It's really that simple. Hopefully, it's what I encourage people to do. This is an opportunity to connect, right? Connect with your significant other, your kids, the people like physical, like have a real conversation with somebody, right? I know it sounds crazy, but it really works. It's really, really good. And also, this is a great opportunity if you, you know, if you're in a relationship or not, whatever you're into, you could, you know, uh, utilize, and I have a chapter on this as well, intimate time, because there's a big connection between sex and sleep. And there's also a big connection between sleep and sex and how it impacts your sex life. And so when we have an orgasm, for example, we produce a chemical, uh, I'm sorry, a cocktail of chemicals, including oxytocin, uh, norepinephrine, prolactin. And oxytocin, for example, has been found clinically to uh, basically combat the effects of cortisol. And hopefully, sex is more interesting than Instagram. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. It depends on how you're doing it. And so that's what I want people to do, a screen curfew and or use these hacks. Utilize them blue light block blockers. And so for your desktops, laptops, things like that, you can get an app called Flux that pulls out the most troublesome, sleep-sucking spectrum of light from your screen. It basically cools your screen off. And it's a simple app. You set it and forget it. It's totally free. You just go to Dr. Google, type in f.lux, and a couple clicks, and it's on your device. I've been using it for maybe five or six years. I love it. And uh, for your uh, telephone, you know, your uh, cell phone, We've got on the iPhones built in now is Night Shift. Uh, with Androids, the best one out there uh, from my research is one called Twilight. You know, so there's options for everybody. Then what about the ambient light at night or if you're watching a movie? Again, I don't want to get, don't get too neurotic about it, but if this is a problem for you and you're not sleeping as well as you could be or your results, your body composition not changing, you're not getting that blood pressure down, you're not having that focus you need through the day, um, then you might want to address this. But Another little hack is to get some blue light blocking glasses. The first ones I had was straight up like, I just built a birdhouse. But now there's some really cool stylish ones that you can rock. As a matter of fact, you'll create a neural association. When you put the glasses on, you'll start to get sleepy. You know, it's nuts. And that is another thing right there, is to create an evening ritual, right? Your brain is always looking for patterns. A lot of successful people, especially listening to the things that you're putting out there, have a success ritual in the morning. But a great morning starts the night before, you know, a truly great morning. And so a couple of quick things people can do is the thermal regulation piece, turn down your thermostat, right? Now this one's, again, this is gonna hit a pressure point for some people, but according to research, between 62 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for sleep. And so for some people, it's gonna sound a little bit frosty, but lowering the thermostat a little bit can have incredible benefit uh, for your sleep. But this doesn't mean you can't use your covers and put on some warm socks, that kind of thing. So cooling off the thermostat, um, making sure that your bedroom, ideally, I, I call it a sleep sanctuary. And so when you walk into your bedroom at night, if your brain has a neuro association, when I go into my bedroom, I'm watching television, I'm working, those channels are gonna fire because of the myelin getting laid down over the years of you doing that behavior, or even months it can get laid down. And so you might have the intention of going to bed, but if your TV's in there, your brain's gonna be firing expecting to watch television. Parts of your brain are gonna be waking up in a way. And so I encourage people to get the tech out of your room. Have your sleep, have your bedroom be a sleep sanctuary, you know, or some place that's just for the, the double S, which is sleep and sex. Here's also a really interesting reason why. There's an Italian study done. They found that couples who have a television in their bedroom have 50% less sex. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's 
and, and you know, this is a little bit more middle aged, a little past middle aged for people in the study. But and I know some people are like, that's not true, I have sex all the time. You probably do it in a snowstorm. Like it doesn't matter where you are. Like you're a human rabbit, it doesn't matter. But for other people, it's like a distraction, right? It's a distraction and it can also, you know, um, create all of those kind of chemical soup issues that we've been talking about with elevating cortisol and those kind of things. So I, ideally, get your television out of the room, uh, the, the other tech, and last thing with the sleep environment I'll share. When I talked about melatonin, you need those two conditions, biological night, you also need a dark environment. And so if you're in an environment where you're maybe in a, a suburban or city environment where there's like neighbor's porch lights coming in, there's LEDs outside, cars coming up and down the street, as crazy as this sounds, that, that small amount of light, what we're now dubbing light pollution, can have a significant impact on your sleep quality. And here's, here's why we know this. Cornell University definitely did the best study on this. And they took a test subject and had them sleep in an otherwise dark room. And they took a, a light, a fiber optic cable, and a light the size of a quarter and put it behind their knee. And that was enough to disrupt their sleep cycle. Because your skin also has photoreceptors that is sending information to your brain, your nervous system, your internal organs to try to tell your body what time it is. It's trying to figure it out. You know, so we want to get rid of that artificial light exposure. Now, does this mean moonlight and stars? No, humans have evolved with those things. And their lux, like I actually put a lux chart in the book, is so small compared to even the weakest fluorescent bulbs. And so get yourself some blackout curtains if that external light is an issue. Internal light, you know, your alarm clocks and you know, light, you know, lamps, you know, some people still are sleeping with their lights on and things like that. Be mindful of that. And also what you can do is just change the bulb color. You know, if you still have issues with the dark, which some adults do, then that's okay. Um, you can change the bulb cover, co color. And I actually had some NASA scientists or people that work with them to send me some different bulbs because folks in space, they don't have that biological clock. And so they would experience all these different health challenges. They had to try to figure it out. They knew that it was an issue with their sleep. And so they start to give them different bowls for different times of day, in a way, you know, even though they're in outer space. So it's really cool what you can do with these little hacks. But bottom line is you want to have a dark cycle so you can produce melatonin. And, you know, those are just a few. Those are just a few of the different things people can do. It's really interesting because you've talked about how, um, like the light behind the knee, it's, you've got these photoreceptors and they're communicating. There's a lot of signaling going on. You've said that the brain makes the body, and then you've also said that food is data. Mm -hmm. Talk me about what do you mean by food is data? I think that's yeah. a pretty powerful concept. Yeah, definitely. This was a big game changer for me early on when I realized that you know food, the food that I was eating wasn't just food, it was, it was information. And every single bite of food that I was eating, and this is something that I've been studying now for over 10 years, I was absolutely love this is something called nutrigenomics and it's a study looking at how every single molecule of food that you eat impacts your genetic expression food is that powerful you know and several other epigenetic factors like sleep which might be the biggest epigenetic influence um, you get to choose what kind of copies are being made of you you know your genes are basically blueprint to print out certain copies and there's upwards of like 4,000 different variations that one gene can do. And you get to have a big role, a big part in how those genes are getting expressed. So understanding that when we eat a you know, particular food, it isn't just, I'm just eating this thing. It's setting off a cascade of events. And it's incredibly empowering, but also can be really sobering. And again, I don't want to get people into the neurotic state because I've been there. But it's more like the majority of what we want to do is things that are hormone healthy, things that are uh, healthy for your DNA, things that are healthy for your genetic expression. Because, you know, you again, you have a big influence on that. And so, you know, early on, really kind of having a, that light bulb go off, it really empowered me to start making food decisions that can help me. Because, you know, if you really think about this, I had the spine of an eight-year-old man when I was 20 years old. I'm in some ways, I'm like Benjamin Button, right? Like, I'm aging backwards, you know? Have you guys talked about telomeres yet? On the show, no. So telomeres are basically the most, the most valuable asset that we have currently to basically tell us how long we're going to live, all right? And so what do I mean by that? 
Your telomeres are like these little, the eaglets at the end of your shoestring that keep your, your shoestrings from unraveling. That's kind of like how telomeres work. They're the end caps uh, at the end of your chromosomes. And as life goes on, your cells divide and those, uh, they keep getting clipped off, clipped off. Those telomeres get clipped off shorter and shorter to the point where your DNA basically unravels, right? And so the crazy thing is that sleep, your, your sleep spectrum, you know, uh, whether you're getting high quality sleep or sleep deprived could be the biggest influence on your telomere length. All right, so literally aging you faster when you're sleep deprived. So because, you know, when we're younger, we're like, sleep three hours, whatever, it's no big deal, and you can, quote, get away with it. And you can. But what you're doing is accelerating your aging process. I know that when this was happening, even before I got the diagnosis, sleep just wasn't, like, I wasn't something I thought about, you know. And so I was accelerating my aging process, little did I know. Another huge player in that is the information that we put into our body. You know, the food and the water. And also a big player is our environment, you know, our relationships, the people around us. And uh, if you were to ask me, you know, sleep is the is more powerful than exercise and nutrition combined on your physical appearance and your health. But your relationships are the biggest governing force over all of it, because that is the most influential thing on the decisions you make with your sleep, on the decisions you make with the food that you eat, on the decisions you make on whether or not you're exercising or when and how you do it, you know? So it's incredibly important to be mindful of if we're looking at ways that we can stave off the aging process, stay young, vital, healthy, happy, as long as possible, we need to be mindful of all of those things. And again, I, I don't wanna create a neurosis today, but there is a way to go about it. And I think that the foundational piece is listening to people like you, you know? constantly, you know, every day, getting that daily dose of, like, getting your mind right, getting your inner game together, and immersing yourself in information like this, and carry that with you into the world, and do your best to get around people that are uplifting you, that are supporting you, in you being the person that you want to become. So before I ask my last question, where can these guys find you online? Awesome. So, um, the, my big place that people find me is generally through my show. It's called The Model Health Show. So people can check that out on anywhere you listen to your podcast. And I guarantee you're going to love it. I mean, my home online is themodelhealthshow.com. So they can find the show there as well. They can find Sleep Smarter there too. And my social media is there. And also people can find Sleep Smarter just, you know, where you buy books, Amazon, all that good stuff. Or you can go to sleepsmarterbook.com. Right. All right. And now my final question. If you could recommend people to make one change, but only one change to their life to have a massive improvement on their health, what would it be? You know what's so funny? It really does go back to the last thing I said. The number one thing, the very best thing that you can do is to get yourself around healthy people. You know, you, everybody's heard the statement by now, you know, you're the average of the five people that are closest to you. Um, it has a tremendous impact, and I always like to... Uh, support everything I say with science, but Princeton University did an interesting study. And they had individuals get together and create rapport, right? Just basic little small talk conversation. And within just a couple of minutes, their brain waves synced up, all right? Their, the frequency at which their brains were moving literally started to match. That happens all the time. You're syncing up with the people around you. So if you, the, the number one thing you can do to transform your health is to get yourself around healthy people, get yourself in the environment, because it's very difficult to go to McDonald's if you're with a healthy person. Like, you know, you guys are like out, you know, just came from the gym, and you know, they're on their way to Whole Foods or whatever, you're like, stop grabbing me in the crib. You know, it's like highly unlikely that you'll do that. You know, just from a logical sense, but from this kind of even metaphysical, deeper level, you really are a product of your environment. And the great thing about humans is that we're not just a product of our environment, we're creative of our environment. So you can consciously choose that. And that's what's gonna help you to take your things to another level. I love that, Sean. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. That was incredible. Guys, this is, I'm telling you, somebody that you are absolutely going to love diving into the world. The, the fact, the way that he answered that last question tells you everything that you need to know about Sean Stevenson. He should have said sleep, because sleep moves more books, but he didn't. He said being around the people, getting around healthy people. Uh, he talked about relationships, because that's the truth. 
And when somebody is far more interested in the truth than they are in moving units, that's when, ironically, they actually move more units because you know that you can trust them and they really build credibility within their community. His show is amazing and that is but the tip of a very large iceberg of somebody who cares very deeply about actually helping people. And that's what you're gonna see as you dive deeper and deeper into his world is not only is he trying to get things backed up by science, but this is stuff that he's experienced in his own life. He's worked with thousands of people in his clinical practice, seen how it plays out with them. He doesn't look away from the things that disprove what he believes. In fact, as he mentioned earlier, he stares right at those things, goes after them because he wants to continually update his thinking, which may... Good morning, everybody. I'm Megan of Megan's Plant Boutique. Thanks for watching my live yoga. Today we listen to Impact Theory on YouTube. Um, we listen to Sean Stevenson speak on health theory. And what health theory is, <laughs> let me get comfortable here. Um, what health theory is, is that, you know, um, there's so much that can help your health. He was saying that, you know, if you don't get the proper amount of sleep, um, you know, you can basically undo your uh, DNA. He was saying that, you know, the end of our DNA has telomeres, and telomeres are um, basically like when a, when a shoelace comes unraveled, you know, because the um, EGOT, what is that thing at the end? The thing that makes the shoelace not unravel. <laughs> so your telomeres are like that. So if um, you're constantly stressed and releasing cortisol to your body, then you're, <laughs> hi, Mama Maria. I see you here. Thanks for being here. Um, so... Basically, he was saying if you don't get the proper amount of melatonin, you won't reach the right sleep cycles. And if you're not reaching the right sleep cycles, then you're going to have higher cortisol levels. If you have higher cortisol levels, then your DNA is going to begin to unravel. And that's just what happens. He says, you know, but of course you can repair this. Um, you can repair this by um, eating right, trying to get the proper amount of sleep. And he said that the ways to do that... Um, the way to get your proper amount of sleep and the way to get better quality sleep is to turn the lights off at night, like blackout curtains. Um, thank you, <laughs> Ramirez, thank you. I saw your gift earlier too. I was just in a position, I waved, I said thank you too. I wanted to let you know. Um, I appreciate you all being here and I appreciate all of your attention. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so he said, you know, use all of the blackout lights, um, blackout curtains, that way you can darken your room, alarm clocks, anything that's giving any kind of light, um, block it out because your body, even if your eyes are closed, can sense the light and your skin has photo, recept photo receptors, evidently. Can you imagine that? Like, I didn't even think about that. I didn't know that at all. So if our skin can tell whether it's light or dark outside, then, you know, we have to like block out the sun and any kind of light so that our skin knows it's time to sleep because our mind builds, builds our body. So he was saying, you know, if our mind is building our body and we're leaving the lights on, we're telling our body that it's not time to go to sleep. So he said another big culprit is our screens. So when we're um, using our cell phones, watching TV, or using our tablets at night before we go to sleep, we should try to give ourselves a curfew and cut it off about 30 minutes before you go to bed. That way your body doesn't see any more light and doesn't sense any more light. Um, that way you can get that full restful sleep. Because if you don't get that restful sleep, you're gonna undo yourself. I mean, I walked you through. So, um, and he walked us through that. Um, so the speaker on health theory that was sean stevenson so i want to make sure if you all want to see, hear more about that sean stevenson recommends you know restful sleep and that's his whole platform but he left us off on a note and he said you know the most important thing we can do for ourselves is be around healthy people so if there's someone that you like and aspire to be like you should follow them and seek them out and be friends with them and you know the reason he said that is he said the five people that we hang out with the most are the people that are going to rub off on us and we're going to absorb their habits as well and we know that's true because you know if your friends on their way to the gym this is the way he said it good morning um if you're, you're on your way to the gym and your friends going to the gym you know and you guys are done you're going home 
you're not going to go to your friend and be like, hey, let's get a McRib. You're going to be like, hey, let's go to Whole Foods because that was their habit and you don't want to, you know, you want to do things that they like to do. So um, when you surround yourself with people who are better than you and in your goals and habits, then you too will become better just because they'll rub off on you. So definitely seek out people who are um, doing things that you want to do and doing things that um, you would like to learn. That way you can get a start somewhere. So um, you are such a positive goddess. Like, thank you. Thank you. Um, Bad Wolf, I appreciate that. I don't read the comments during yoga, so I want to go back and look at a couple of those comments. Tap the screen to show support. That is my mod. Thank you for being here. Mama Maria, I see you are here. Um, let's see. Close your eyes and relax and exhale for real. It's um, hard to breathe in some of these positions, and if I close my eyes, I might actually lose my balance, so. Let's see, what else? All of these purple lights. Ah, I caught your live, you did catch my live. A lot of my followers caught my live this time. Um, I saw a few of you all comment, um, and I love that, that's so fun. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back into the chat here. Um, so every morning I do yoga at 8 a.m. So after I finish, I make a new event at 8 a.m. for tomorrow. So if you all wanna register to um, hear more motivational speeches and just feel you know, the overall ambience of relaxation that I do here, I have lots of plants, I do the spa thing. I do the, you hear the water. That's actually my hydroponic system. So I'm actually rooting plants over there. So there's actually a purpose for it. Um, what else? So I do this every morning, right, at 8 a.m. So I do yoga from 8 to 8.30. And then after 8.30, I talk about the motivational speaker and what he discussed or she discussed during their speech. And today we listened to Sean Stevenson. So Sean Stevenson basically was saying that sleep is more important than your diet. And if you, you know, don't get the appropriate amount of sleep, then you're 55% more likely to hold on to that weight or um, it's 50%, 55% more likely that your cortisol rates are going up. But basically all of it adds up to if you don't get restful sleep, then you're going to undo your own DNA. And Sean Stevenson gave us a nice one hour speech about that, so I can't summarize it all. But you know, if you all do wanna to listen to all of it, then you can um, go to the Impact Theory on YouTube to um, get more of this. So I'm gonna upload this live after I um, schedule a new one for tomorrow. And um, my 20% off sale is still going on. It's Wednesday, so I am gonna be shipping plants. If you didn't know, I'm Megan of Megan's Plant Boutique. I never miss a moment to advertise. <laughs> so, you know, you can see this outfit on, in my shop as well. That link is in the bio. So my Etsy shop has tons of plants, cuttings, mystery boxes, propagation stations. Um, people have been ordering up for Christmas. The last day to order for Christmas is December 14th. Get your order in December 14th. That way I can get your order shipped by the 15th, um, you know, and make sure everybody gets their presents for Christmas. Good morning, Ghost Rider. Um, Patty Fernandez, is this starting or ending? So we are kind of in the middle to end. We're kind of in the end. Um, once I go into what I'm talking about for my business, then you know we are going to wrap soon. Um, but that 20% off sale is still ongoing. Mama Maria and Papa D are still here. Papa D is going to help me pack up some of our boxes today. I'm going to show you guys um, how that goes. And mm, what else is going on? Oh, I showed you all my Berry Illusion Syngonium today. And I have this really bright Ryobi light that is like blowing out my leaves. And by that, you know what I mean. Like it's um, just making them like so white they're hard to see when I do my um, side planks. But um, anywho, this is a Berry Illusion Syngonium, and I have several of these available in my shop. So if you want an easy to grow aeroid, these are aeroids. Um, aeroid means that the roots can grow in the air and they hug trees. Aeroid actually means tree hugger. 
Um, but they don't need a whole lot of sun, a whole lot of light. Um, they just need, you know, maybe a few feet back from an east facing window and they will do wonderful. They don't need a whole lot of water, so these are easy to raise plants. And they're 20% off in my shop. So we are approaching nine, it is 841. So I'm going to, uh, what am I gonna do? So I'm going to, in the live, I'm gonna make another event. I'm gonna upload this video to um, YouTube. So if you don't get to see all of them, you can always go back and see what motivational speeches we've been listening to and um, check that out. Um, if you wanna see everywhere that I am, I um, have a good day, man of the woods. Thanks for coming. Thanks for all of you all who liked and followed and joined this as well. Um, I appreciate this um, because I've, I've been doing this for six, seven weeks now. And it's made such a difference in my life, so I'm gonna keep doing it every day. So I'm gonna, like I said, <laughs> uh, bye Megan, thank you for another great morning. Bye Ramirez, I'm glad you enjoyed the live. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make another event after this and upload this to YouTube and pack everybody's boxes. So I'm gonna check you all later, have a good day.